Je m'appelle Nassim, j'ai 29 ans. Vous pourriez nous expliquer un peu comment vous avez entendu parler de la justice restaurative C'est les victimes qui rencontrent des détenus. You are very menacing. <laughs> From an exploration of restorative justice in France to a superhero saga where the kids have the power, welcome to this week's cinema show. Joining me to talk about some of the notable releases is one of France 24's film critics, Emma Jones. Emma, Hi. hello. Uh, you're starting off with a documentary that is incredibly timely. It's about a young Iranian woman who was executed for murder almost a decade ago. Yes, it's called Seven Winters in Tehran, and it's the story of Rihanna Jabari, and she was the victim of an attempted rape in 2007, and she stabbed the man who tried to rape her, who was a former employee at the Ministry of Intelligence, and she acted, she said, in self-defence. Uh, a deeply flawed trial followed, and she was convicted of premeditated murder on the basis that she had confessed to purchasing a knife a couple of days before the incident, and that's a confession, she said, that was extracted under torture. Now, according to Iranian law, um, once she was convicted, only a pardon from the family of the victim could save her from a death sentence, and they asked her to retract her allegation of rape. Now, Rihanna Jabari refused, and she was eventually executed in 2014 after five years on death row, and she was only 26 years old. Wow, it sounds like a devastating story. Mm -hmm. uh, let's take a look then at Seven Winters in Tehran. <laughs> در خانه ای که با عشق بنا شده بود. من ریحانه دختر ارشد خانواده سه دختره زمانی که 19 سال داشتم دانشجوی ترم سوم بودم با سری پرشور و دلی مشتاق پیش رفت. Now, this feels like a really important and timely documentary, given the ongoing protests in Iran, um, sparked by the death of a young woman in, in police custody. Her name was Masa Amini, and that happened, of course, last year. And the director of this film, Steffi Nidazol, she agrees. For us, it's really a big opportunity and also a big chance to spread more and more that because right now there are so many people in death penalty so many people every day are uh, hanged and executed in iran so we have now the chance to speak about it and to create awareness about it so an incredibly mm -hmm. resonant documentary yeah. emma given the dozens of protesters yeah. facing the death penalty what was this movie like to watch it's a really great film. It is upsetting to watch, though, of course, um, but it feels like so much more than a talking head archive documentary, as we often call them, although there are really great interviews with Rayana Jabari's family in there. Her mother and her sisters have actually gone to Germany since then because of their activ activism, whereas the father has so far not been allowed to go and join his family. So there are great interviews there. Uh, you also hear footage of Rihanna's own voice, plus her letters, which were smuggled out of prison before, they di before she died. And they are voiced by a prominent Iranian actress, uh, that's uh, Zara Mir Ebriami, who recently starred in Ali Abbasi's Holy Spider movie about a serial killer of Iranian women. Uh, so there's also really devastating mobile phone footage of Rihanna's mother outside the prison on the day that she was executed. And it just feels, it, it's such an interesting dynamic, you know, this close contact between the Jabari family and the victim's family. It binds them together in, in, such, a, in such an odd closeness. Um, but above all, this is the story of a, of a really, really courageous young woman who was potentially offered a pardon if she retracted her story, but she refused to do so. So a really important watch, I feel. Definitely an important watch then, Emma. We're going to stay on the theme of justice now, but come here to France. This next film is called Je verrai toujours vos visages. It's been titled All Your Faces in English. Mm. Emma, tell us what it's about. 
Yes, well, its director, Jeanne Herry, is clearly interested in social issues because her last film, Pupil, or In Safe Hands, as it was known in English, looked at the French adoption system. And now she's interested in exploring the concept of restorative justice, which is something that's been available in France since 2014. And it's where prisoners and victims of a crime are matched together and get to meet each other and talk about these issues. Um, and to realise her vision, she surrounded herself with some of her favourite actors. Now, these include Gilles Lelouch and Elodie Boucher, who are in In Safe Hands. Uh, but she's also working with her mother, <laughs> who is actually the very veteran, very famous veteran French actress, Miu Miu. And the cast also includes Adele Exacopoulos and Dali Ben Sala, Lely Bechti. So it's a really strong ensemble cast and it follows a number of victims and perpetrators and their worlds collide in a series of meetings. Certainly lots of household names here in France. Let's take a look at Je verrai toujours vos visages. Quand vous parlez de peur, vous voulez dire quoi exactement? Quand vous attaquez quelqu'un, il n'y a pas qu'une victime. Il y a d'autres victimes derrière. Il y a des familles, des couples, des enfants. On met des petites claques, c'est pour impressionner. Mais des claques, c'est des coups. En vrai, j'ai l'impression que j'ai jamais rien décidé dans ma vie. Assume Nous sors pas tes excuses débiles, là Tu le prépares pas, en fait Moi, tu me prépares Moi, ça fait des mois que je bosse comme une chienne, que j'ouvre tous les dossiers all right, another quite emotionally intense looking yes. film. Emma, what did, what did you think of yeah. this one? It's a great watch. It, it really is highly recommended. Um, the narrative is really strong. It's not preachy either. And everything does really hinge on the narrative because most of the film is dialogue and a lot of the shots are a mid close up or a close up of the faces. So it's it really does depend on the script. The script is great. And most of it is taken up with these restorative justice sessions and they get together um, social workers, prisoners and victims of crime. And you see how it unfolds over the five sessions. Now, Adele, she has a subplot where she's playing a young woman who was abused by her half brother as a child and she's seeking a session in order to meet him face to face. And that takes a very unexpected and a very moving turn. And I think that she probably has the standout scenes of this ensemble cast. Uh, but there's really some quite funny moments in the film as well, so don't go expecting too much of a weighty watch about these, these kind of social issues. And it actually even gets quite sentimental in the end, which I suppose if you were a cynic, you'd say, well, does that really happen? But I'm going to put faith in this director just because of her body of work and say that she must have really observed what's happened in these sessions. And if she believes that healing and reconciliation is possible through this theme of restorative justice, I'll put my faith in her that that, that happens. Right, it sounds moving and perhaps inspiring yeah. as well. Uh, the next film is quite a change in tone. <laughs> it's a superhero yes. movie, uh, not from the world of Marvel, but from their rival, the D DC Extended Universe. This is the second installment of Shazam. Yes. Now, if you've <laughs> watched the very first successful Shazam movie from back in 2019, you'll know it's, it is part of DC Entertainment's answer to the Marvel uh, comedy superhero franchise. And it follows a group of teenagers who are part of an extended foster family and they have alter adult uh, superheroes. You know, they have all... It's uh, quite a strange premise, um, but... The main character is a young man called Billy Batson and he's played by Asher Angel and upon the words Shazam, he turns into Shazam the superhero and he's played by Zachary Levy as an adult. Uh, so in Shazam Fury of the Gods made by the same director, that's the Swedish David F. Sandberg, uh, the teenage family who are still getting to grips with their superpowers, they have to battle a trio of female goddesses loosely based on Greek mythology. So you have Hespera, she's played by Helen Mirren. You have Calypso, played by Lucy Liu. And then you've got Anthea, who's played by West Side Story's Rachel Zegler, who is considerably less terrifying. <laughs> I have to say, I love the casting of those villains. Let's take a look at Shazam! Fury of the Gods. I have to do this. We end this now. Yeah, we do. Started from the bottom, now we're here. Started from the bottom, now the whole team here. 
And Emma, we can safely say, I think, that you're not a huge fan of these movies. Not a huge fan. It's it's a bit of, it feels like a bit of an empty vessel. You know, it is fun and the action's really good. Um, I think probably my highlight of the film, worth watching just for this, is Helen Mirren reciting her lines with all seriousness as if she was on the Ulvik stage in <laughs> London. And it did make me think, what is Helen Mirren doing in this film? Yeah, definitely worth watching then for Lucy Liu and for Helen Mirren, at least. Um, finally, Emma, we're going to end with a celebration of the work of British director Joanna yeah. Hogg. Absolutely. Well, her latest film, The Eternal Daughter, was released in France last week. And that's the ghostly story of a mother and daughter who go and stay in a very creepy gothic house. Uh, to celebrate this, there's going to be a limited re-release of Joanna Hogg's work, including both souvenir films, which have become her most famous work. They star Honor Swinton Byrne, who's Tilda Swinton's daughter. They're produced by Martin Scorsese. And it's a very autobiographical story for Joanna Hogg because Honor plays a young film student. And by the end of the second souvenir film, she's made um, her first movie herself. So of note of, of all of Joanna Hogg's works, which are now on release, I've got to mention 2007's Unrelated, which stars a young Tom Hiddleston. And that's about a family, uh, a family holiday in Italy. And then there's also a 1986 short called Caprice. Now that starred Tilda Swinton as a girl who's lost inside a fashion magazine. And it not only helped uh, launch Tilda Swinton's career, of course, back in the 80s, but it also helped cement a very famous friendship, which is between Joanna Hogg and Tilda Swinton. All right, well, we'll leave you with the taste of Joanna Hogg's most beloved film, Souvenir Parts 1 and 2. Emma, thank you so much, as always. Thanks to all of you for watching. There's more news coming up on France 24 just after this. She looks sad. I think she looks determined. I'm very much in love. What, what has changed? I don't want to show life as it plays out. I want to show life as I imagine it.